Mummy's with the maggots now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Justin. And I'm Garrett from Born to be Rad. Today we're going to be talking about Evil Dead Rise. We were lucky enough to catch an advanced screening and give you guys an inside look at our first initial thoughts, spoiler-free thoughts, on the new film produced by Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi, uh, Evil Dead Rise. Let's get into it. So what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with us today. My Rad Pack homie, Ooh. Garrett. Uh, came to town this weekend for Panic Fest in Kansas City, a local horror film festival. This is the 11th year, the 11th annual Panic Film Fest, where tons of movies that have yet to find distrib distribution or movies that we're just getting a sneak peek at are available for us to see. And that was the case with Evil Dead Rise. We get to catch it uh, a week ahead of it coming out. I am a huge, I know you're a huge Evil Dead yeah. fan too. I, In my personal opinion, I don't think there's a bad movie in the series. So I know my expectations were fairly high for this one. I know I was at least typing it up in my head oh, a lot, you of know? I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, I'm a big Evil Dead fan. The whole franchise, we've talked about this before. We've talked about it. We've talked about it with Mel, who is the third member of the Rad Pack, and she was with us this weekend as well. And we've said in the past that as a franchise, Evil Dead is kind of really good straight through. I mean, between the first one, part two, Army of Darkness, even the TV show and the 2013 remake or reboot or whatever you want to call it, uh, I would even say 2013 kind of is almost like, still feels like a part four to me with just a new yeah. cast of characters, which was a great um, movie, I thought. Yeah. So leading up to this one and seeing the trailer, I kind of thought to myself, it looks promising as well. And I try my best to not go into a lot of these current movies with any expectations at all, because for me personally, I find myself getting a little bit more disappointed than not. But with this one, I almost could not be somewhat excited, especially yeah. like you said, because we got to see it early. So my hype bar was even more because I'm like, oh my God, we get to see an early screening, which is really weird because man, I saw an early screening to the 2013 one as well mm. um, back in the day. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah, um, I am a huge fan of 2013. Um, like, like I said, I'm a fan of all the original movies. I, each one of them is so much different. They all have similar aesthetics, but Sam Raimi, at least in the first three, was able to kind of reinvent the films. He almost almost did like a loose remake for Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness, he did something completely different. Evil Dead 2013 had a way darker vibe, but still kind of kept a lot of the aesthetics. And going into uh, the brand new one, I feel like we still had a lot of that same feel. Although it's taken out of the woods, we're now in a big city. It takes place in this high-rise apartment. We're introduced to this new batch of characters. Um, and th there really isn't a, a ton of plot to the movie. It's sort of a quick setup. We introduced uh, this this mom whose husband and these her children's father has recently left. So she's at this part. She's like a single mom now taking right. care of, was it three kids? Three kids, yeah. Yeah, taking care of three kids. And she's kind of going through a rough time. Um, they go out to get pizza and when they go back to the parking garage there's an earthquake that sort of unearths uh, the events that I don't need to spoil everything because there's some cool shit that happens uh, an event happens that sort of um, puts all the wheels in motion for the the chant to happen and the book to get revealed it's it's they kept it very I would say true to Evil Dead stuff you have the Necronomicon you have the Deadites it's just in a little bit different setting and especially towards the end there is some new things offered that we've never seen before in an Evil Dead movie like some body horror elements that right. I wasn't um, expecting and I know uh, it starts off with a bang what do you think about that yeah, opening man, scene I, the opening was really really cool and, and I we talked about this after the movie was over is I really like when when movies have that kind of great opening when yeah. the title card hits and there's a you know you get a cool sound or whatever. Yeah. I, I brought it back to Insidious. When I saw Insidious mm -hmm. for the first time, that opening title card and the lead up to it, when Insidious flashed on the screen and the, and the noise and the music that happened, I was like, yeah. dude, I know I'm going to dig this one. And, and I kind of get that same feel with Evil Dead yeah. because it was a real epic kind of opening to this movie. Like it really got you hyped up to what we were about to say. That opening title card could almost be like hung on a wall as a as a as an image. Yeah. I, I want to talk about that opening, but I feel like we should I don't know, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but it is kind of a cold open that really sets the tone that lets you know, hey, this movie is going to get gory, it's gonna get brutal, and you're gonna get everything that you that you want in an Evil Dead movie. When it comes to the overall picture, um, like I said, this is gonna be spoiler free. Um, I loved about, I, I can't say there's anything I disliked about the movie, maybe some things that I thought 
weren't as um, strong as other moments. Um, I know you had some mixed feelings on some aspects of the movie. Right. Overall, I, I definitely did love this movie. Um, it's just different. I feel like I have to see it a couple more times. We've never seen like children introduced right. to an Evil Dead movie. It's always been like a group of teens or in the case of Army of Darkness, um, like going back to medieval times. And this is different. I mean, one of our, all of our protagonists, our protagonists are kind of children, I guess, which is, is different, but right. the stakes were kind of high because you had this family aspect. Um, it's pretty clearly displayed in the trailer that the mother of the kids is overtaken by this entity. And I guess if I had to say what stood out to me the most was that actress. I think her name is, we just looked it up, Alyssa, Alyssa Sutherland. Alyssa Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah. She's amazing and she kind of carries the main deadite mm -hmm. um, aspect of this. Um, but what what were you what do you think what were the your main like positive takeaways of it? Uh, a lot with what you said. I think that the effects were really good. Um, mm -hmm. I think what we end up getting as the movie starts to you know get towards the tail end of the movie, it really ramps up to like this big kind of ending. And I really like that. I like the effects. You know, it really still feels Evil Dead to mm -hmm. me. I think what my only issue was is I think that to me. Leading up to where things start happening, it get, it's a little draggy a little bit. I agree, me. yeah. And I feel like 2013 at least had a real cool, like, I felt like that movie, even leading up to when everything happened, was just a more interesting story of, like, trying to get her help and because mm -hmm. she was an addict and all that stuff. And I just feel like that was a little bit more, and, and I don't know if it has to do with being in the woods because I'm really a, attracted to that kind of setting in yeah. 2013. And this one being in more of, like, the city in an apartment building like mm -hmm. it just didn't have that same feel to me but. evil dead kind of has made its its whole like um the hallmark being that cabin in the woods movie right. one of the very first ones so so they did good for what it was to change it up to make it different i think overall it was good um it, like i said once things start really happening i really was like really hyped up into it but it, Part of it was the lead up to me. I just kind of felt like it was dragging a little bit, but I think it made up for it once, you know, everything started hitting the fan. And what's, I think going back to what you're saying about the intro, I think the intro could have been like the whole, like the first act of the movie. The thing, the thing I think it, it was is that the characters aren't extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes back with the, the setup of in 2013 where they're trying to get her sober. There's a little bit more stakes and there's a reason that the characters have been brought together. This is just like, you know, Here's this family having, you know, joking around with each other, and it's not as strong of an opening. Like, the cold open is amazing, and then we go and introduce to our main characters, and I can't say that those, like, especially the kids, I didn't find them very interesting. I, and maybe I, I, I'm just I being an old boomer nah. about it, but I, I don't know, I just... No, I, I agree, I, I didn't. I think that the two sisters, the the, the mother and right. her sister, I think were, were my favorite two characters of the whole bunch. Yeah. Um, and the kids being there was just a different dynamic, but for whatever reason, I just think the other two really kind of held it together. It almost could have been, you almost could have eliminated one or two of those kids, because you're right, the sister aspect really kind of hit the emotional notes that I was looking for, because you have the one sister who has all the kids, and then she has another sister who was kind of like, maybe doesn't have her shit together, and she shows up after not talking, not being there for her sister after her husband leaves. So that strained relationship was more interesting from an emotional standpoint. Um, and then you have the kids. The little daughter who was kind of cool who was making like the spears and oh, yeah, doing yeah, her yeah, thing yeah, that was that was kind stuff. of cool and then one of the other kids is like a dj i felt like that part was kind of cheesy where they showed her doing her dj thing with now, her headphones i don't remember though did that lead to anything or was that just like this it, is what they they like to do well i without going into two spoilers it, i think the only reason that existed is so that she could find the find that vinyl in the basement Okay, um, okay. So it was like connecting that with there's an, a record aspect. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, other than that, it was pretty, pretty, you know, un unnecessary. But you do get amazing gore, like Garrett said. Um, you do notice some like digital blood. I, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I wouldn't say that like a digital gore or CGI took away from it, but you could notice it. Yeah, I agree. There was some parts that, that kind of felt like that, but I think what Evil Dead does well and i'm glad they kind of stuck to that is it's a little overly gory which it is which is what yeah. i like because it's not unnecessary gore it makes sense because like evil dead's kind of always had that track right record. so um i really just like that that keeping with that because you know when you're going to go see an evil dead movie it's going to be pretty gory mm -hmm. it's going to be almost kind of off the wall when it comes to how bloody you're going to see right and i like and i like that they still did that mm -hmm. and uh that to me just really you know still makes this a real strong entry in this whole franchise and if I had to give it out of 1 out of 10, I'd probably say, I'm going to probably say 7.5 to 8 out of 10 mm -hmm. for me, I think, on this as a whole. Uh, like you said, 
it was very late when we saw this. Um, we had traveled all day to get here. Mm -hmm. We saw it late. So another viewing of this, I think, is something I really want to do, which is, to me, is great because there's a lot of movies that we've watched this weekend that I said, yeah, that's a one-time watch for me. Yeah. But this one is definitely, like, I can't wait to, to see this again. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's stuff I either missed or or whatnot. So, yeah. So yeah. I, I think I think my rating would probably be pretty similar. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go below seven because it's a damn, damn good movie. It just didn't hit, like, every... I feel like... 2013. I've always spoke spoke very highly of that movie. I I would almost consider it a perfect horror film. I know a lot of people hate on 2013. I'm not sure why. Really, I, I don't like... understand. Just because Bruce Campbell, it's like Bruce Campbell or nothing. You know? Yeah. I, I feel like I don't know. I feel like a lot of people give that one a lot of credit, and I and I agree. I think 2013 is better uh, than Evil Dead Rise, and but. And, but I do think that a lot of people are going to really like Rise. Like being in the community yeah. that we're in, I, I think it's going to get a lot of positive, you know, feedback yeah. as far as that. So. Yeah, I would set it at easily at an eight. Easy, I would rank it easily as an eight. Um, I, I've always said I think everybody in the community we really, really wanted that 2013 sequel. I felt like it was set up so good for a sequel with a an extremely strong lead character which i feel like 2013 is its big, biggest lacking point is some of the side characters who would continue in a sequel i'm not sure how interested i am seeing some of these young like teenagers carry on the evil dead but maybe that's just my own hang up um, but all of the performances across the board are great. Uh, the effects are fantastic. I think they threw in a couple things. Uh, I know Mel wasn't too, she was a little mixed on um, some, some of, the of the changes and the elements yeah. that they made. And I, when you see kind of what this kind of becomes at the end and, and the changes that they made and stuff that we haven't really seen in the Evil Dead franchise before, I kind of liked it because that to me is like, I like that kind of horror. That to me brings me back to like the, the it's early like, the, 80s like Stuart and, Gordon, Brian using yeah, this stuff. Yeah, so like I really yeah. appreciate that personally. It is different than what we've seen, so maybe that's why people might be like, that doesn't feel Evil Dead, but I just kind of like that kind of stuff. I just feel like it, it is a little bit different, and, and you know, to add new elements to Evil Dead is cool as long as they still kind of keep to the same feel. Yeah, listen, I mean, this they're making a modern movie for modern audiences. They're not trying to just cater to the old heads like you and yeah, me who, <laughs> who grew up. I mean, people right. who grew up on the thing, because I remember a quote uh, from uh, uh, Jason Blum when, when Halloween was coming out, and he said, guys, like, I know you're complaining about these small aspects. We've done so much research and they found out that a large percentage of people going to see these new Halloween movies either hadn't seen the original or didn't even know it existed. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, I can understand why they make certain changes to update it for a modern audiences because they're not just selling the movie to me. They're selling it. They're trying to sell it to the biggest amount of people and still keep the older app, you know, the original audience happy, which I know has to be extremely challenging. But the camera angles are there. Those mm -hmm. creepy tracking shots are there. The split diopter shots. Well, they'll have. Well, they'll have the 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 deadite with the blurry background characters. You know, like there's the the camera techniques of Evil Dead are all there. The gore's there. The deadites are there. Um, I, I think it's going to be satisfying for the fans. I do too. And, and hearing you talk about it a little bit more kind of brings me back to Evil Dead's very interesting because as much as we said we all wanted a sequel to 2013, and I still do, and I think what happened was the lead, I, it could be hearsay, but I remember them saying maybe she didn't want to do any more. Um, but she was such a strong character, and we could have like led a more female lead, taking that Ash-like role mm -hmm. moving forward. Um, this one, I don't see any of these characters moving forward. So... With that being said, maybe Evil Dead just kind of turns into like people get, you know, people direct it, they do it their way, mm -hmm. there's like a single story, boom, we move on, yeah. same concept, new new idea, which not necessarily would be a bad thing. It turns into kinda, like an anthology kind of thing. Where it's like, hey, we're taking that Evil Dead and we're just kind of running with it because I don't see this getting a direct sequel yeah. with this cast. I don't see how it would work, to be honest with you. So, but I am curious to see what comes from this because I do think there is going to be more Evil Dead in the works you know, after mm -hmm. this movie, because I do think it's going to do really well. I think it's going to, I think it's going to do really well too, because I think the word of mouth is already great. Like I would highly recommend seeing this movie. Um, I, I would, I could see some people not liking certain aspects of it, but I, I also think it's going to do really well. It's a, it's a solid horror movie. I was afraid that maybe it would have been toned down or something, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's balls to the wall. It's an Evil Dead movie, and it's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I agree. And guys, this is just our spoiler-free review. We're going to go spoiler-heavy on our own channels once this comes out, but for now, if you're thinking about checking this thing out, 
that's what this is for. I want you guys to get our initial opinions on it. And we're telling you guys to definitely go check this out. Absolutely. And this is Garrett at Born to Be Rad with Justin at Movie Watch Daily and The Dead Couch. We are two thirds of the Rad Pack. If you want to hear about our experience at Panic Fest, a little bit more detailed, make sure to go to the Rad Pack podcast where we're all together talking about the experience, not only seeing Evil Dead rise together, but all the other cool things that happen at Panic Fest. You can check it out there. So again, this is Garrett at Born to Be Rad. And like always, stay rad. Stay weird. Bye.